What's up? It's back. He's here. John J. Rambo in the house. Okay, so this is one of the first poses I'm doing. He's hidden behind this uh, forest dropped uh, log. And he is uh, just about to take off on his mission. First, he's scoping the place out to see what he can see. And jaw. Oh, look at the detail on his 8K. The magazine drops out. You can cock it. It's a folding stock. He's got his compact bow, recurved bow, all assembled. I don't know if you can see it there on top of his quiver of arrows. He's got his high explosive ready to hand in the patrol bag in case shit hits the fan. And yeah, I bet you didn't even see him there at first. I've got him that well camouflaged. Did you? Uh, don't lie. You didn't see him. I'm trying to get you his, uh, his gaze. Look at that. You in shit, bud. You in shit when he's looking at you like that. Very easy figure to pose. He's got a lot of articulation. And you know I've pointed out or try to show you about the chest being caught behind the arm. There's a perfect example of it. Can you see it there? Just where his bicep meets the chest. It's, uh, it gets tucked behind there and it goes actually behind the arm and folds inside. So you, you have to keep checking for that if you're going to put him in a pose. I had to pull that out, but uh, because I've got the arm so tight, it's showing that it's looking like it again, but it's not actually. I've actually pulled it out. You can't see his trusty knife. That's the tie down on the folded leg, on the bent leg, I should say, of the blade. But there is a knife pose coming up, so you can watch that. Look at him, man. How dope is that? It's a long road to where I've been. But they're all dead, sir. They're all dead. He asked me to find his leg. I couldn't find his legs. <laughs> yeah. If you watch hospital conversations, I've got a story about that. But look at him, man. Hey, how dope does that look? I see customs diorama, uh, backdrops and bases backdrop, and yeah, Steve and Steve Weber does I see customs, which are these, and Dean Gladwell and my one of my good friends Kevin Clarkson does the the rendering of the photos for Dean to print. Nice, eh? Look at that beauty, man. Look at that beauty. That's Rambo. Can you imagine how dope he would have looked with uh, real hair? That's the only thing nitpick about this figure is, can you see the way the hair hangs? It doesn't hang natural. That's because it's made of plastic. And this gimbal is supposed to be taking the bloody shake out the camera. It's adding more shake than anything else. So yeah, he's just about to lob a grenade. Uh, he must have seen something in the jungle or in the bush, as we call it in South Africa. Because that's what he is. He's a bush fighter. We were the best in the world at one stage at bush warfare. American Britain always tied for uh, conventional. But the Yanks have got so many, so much materials and so much manpower to throw at things that, uh, yeah, they used to come out on top in conventional warfare, but no one could beat us in bush warfare. No one. No one. Look at that rock. The detail on this diorama. I know I'm supposed to be showing you Rambo, but look at him, eh? I mean, it looks like that diorama was made for him, but it's not. It's not. And I could quite easily see him in his own display cabinet looking like this. Lovely, bloody, jubbly indeed. It 
kind of like bring, brings at home who he is and where he was, you know, instead of seeing him in just a display cabinet. Really dope. Really, really dope. I'm over the moon. Over the moon. There you can see the articulation that he's got. I mean, look, that knee's bent. That he's kneeling on. That knee's bent, and there's no damage to the figure. He's got double action knees, double bend knees. Uh, the arms are a bit of a problem. It's got the fleshy material on, and that can deteriorate over time, especially if you leave it in a stupid pose. But, I mean, there's figures that have deteriorated being kept brand new in the box. So, you know, you, you, as long as you look after them, keep on checking on them, make sure that everything's still tight and lacquer, you'll be okay. And don't leave it in some silly pose just to impress every Tom, Dick and Harry that comes through the door. Only do action poses if you're going to be taking photos or a video and then you can put him back in a nice static pose or a museum pose so that joints and material don't get damaged. It's just common sense, most of it. As I was saying, that magazine in the AK pulls out uh, at Cox, like a normal AK. Uh, the grenade launcher works. You can cock that. Yeah, beautiful piece of uh, equipment by 3-0. And I was thinking uh, a fission body on him, but it's going to hide the scar. You won't have the scars. And that uh, you'll see in the uh, bow and arrow shot, the scars are important. Well, I suppose in any shot where he's got the tank top off, the scar is important. It shows who he is and where he's been, you know, what he's been through. If uh, Teasel had taken notice of that, Sheriff Teasel in First Blood, they would have noticed. Yeah, well, you know, they only noticed when they were giving him a shower. And uh, Galt, the one deputy, just carried on pushing him, carry on pushing him. Till the end he cracked when they started to shave him. Because he had PTSD, you know. And he took him back to when the Vietnamese general or captain, whatever he was, was torturing him and cutting him when they tried to shave him in the prison. But when they were giving him a shower, they should have noticed. Well, they did. Uh, what's his name? The redhead, David Crusoe. What's his name in the book? Ah, I can't remember. can't remember. Mitch. Mitch. He says to Galt, look at the scars, man. There's something wrong with this guy. We need to call Teasel, the sheriff. And Galt just carried on, eh? Pushing him and pushing him. Galt was the one that uh, falls out the chopper in the beginning on the chase. But, yeah. Uh, lovely, lovely figure, eh? Congrats, 3-0. You, 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 you literally nailed this guy. I can uh, speak for others. Everyone is so impressed with him. The, my peers in the collecting groups, they all love him. Yeah, you know, he's a very dope piece, eh? Very dope piece. Could this have been better? Could that have been better? Yeah. But, I mean, it is what it is, you know? You want hot toys quality? you got to get hot toys. They have did first blood, but they're not the best, I must admit. I, I can't remember if it's Sideshow that did them. I could be lying. It's either Sideshow or Hot Toys, did uh, Colonel Trotman, did First Blood, him, did the Halo Jumper. I'm sure it is Hot Toys, but I think they were just starting then, you know? Look at that. I mean, that looks like a scene out the movie. Golden Globes, here me and Muate come. We'll start writing our own music soon. Okay. Enough chit chat. I'll leave you there. I'll come back with, say, the knife fighting pose next. And we'll take it from there. So hold your breath and be honest, eh? Hold your breath until I get back. If you pass out, it's your own fault. I'll be back.
All right, so as promised, here he is. Jumping out from over the log with that terrifying knife in his hand. There you can see the scars on his chest, that 3 zero have added to the body. You can also see that little clench part of the chest has opened up again because I've opened up the shoulder. Look at that fearsome blade, man. That would go right through your cranium. Okay, so he's holding on to that uh, tree log there. And he's just about to jump out and kill you. Simply, simply kill you. There's the sheath that you couldn't see before. Tied down to his leg, almost like a gunslinger. Very lacquer to pose, eh? Honestly, it's like playing with your action men of old. You can't do that with every figure because you worry about breaking this and breaking that. But this guy's so articulated. As I say, the only problem is the fleshy part on the arms could deteriorate over time if you left him in a nasty pose. But uh, for the purposes of shooting a video, it's, uh, it's all right. Especially with Saigon in the background there. Oh, that's Saigon. Gotham City, that's Saigon. Look, Rambo was never in Gotham. Okay. That's a dope pose, eh? Would have been nice if uh, they gave him a metal blade. That would have been nice. Some of the some of the figures do uh, have uh, die cast blades. Again, he's using the trigger hand because they don't come with a knife hand. And Jar ja, man, look at him. He's just a fabulous, fabulous piece. He really is. No matter what you do with him, he looks good. Really nice, especially on this diorama. It was like almost, I uh, keep on saying it like it was made for him, but it's not. Look at those abs. Very similar to my build. This build here. Did you ask if I do weights? No, no, no. It's a natural build. Natural build. Never done weights in my life. But look at that. <laughs> That's Rambo. That is Rambo. Yeah, every time I uh, do something with this piece, I fall more and more in love with it. It's going to be a sad day if ever I have to sell him because he just poses so beautifully, man. All action poses. Okay, his hip, where the leg uh, that's going down to the ground, that looks a bit awkward. Uh, that's with the trousers tucking into the hip joint behind the ball, behind the, the thigh peg, if I can call it that. But I can live with that for this pose. An interesting story. Uh, Sylvester, when he was doing all the Rocky movies and that, at one stage he had to stop training because he was building muscle on top of muscle and he had no they had no access to veins. You know? I don't know if they found that out when he went to give blood or, or what, but yeah, he had to stop. Because he was getting muscles on top of muscles. Very similar to me, very similar to me. So yeah, that's him in his knife fighting pose. Well, knife fighting, I'd say using his knife more than a knife fighting pose. Let me actually end it here and put him in a, a knife fighting pose. Show you what he looks like. Okay, so we'll leave you with a vision of his blade, which would go, as I say, straight through your cranium. And we'll be back just now with a knife fighting stance. I'll be back. Welcome back to another pose of Rambo in his knife fighting pose. He's got his hand outstretched. Ready to block. Obviously not another blade. He wants to block whatever's holding the blade. Or try and grab hold of it. Classic gunfighter stands bent at the knees. Legs spread wide apart. Cutting edge turned outwards. 
Guys, I don't know if you know that, but the trick of knife fighting is to get as many cuts as you can on your opponent. Because the more he bleeds, the weaker he gets. So you wouldn't learn that at the corner supermarket. So yeah, if you can't produce the killing blow with the first strike, you've got to go for small cuts, deep cuts, that will weaken him as he loses blood. And obviously if you can get a hamstring or you can get a tendon at the back of the arm, all the better for you, you know? But uh, yeah, if you're facing someone in a knife fight that's prepared for you and uh, knows what to do with a blade himself, that's what they go for. Small cuts to injure you, hamper you, lose blood, and you get weaker. Doesn't he look dope, eh? And you can see the lights changing with him. So maybe I better hold it in here. So at least you're getting decent views of his pose. Very dope. He's, okay, the diorama helps. Uh, you know, to get standing poses without crutch grabbers is always a bitch to do. But on this diorama, he, uh, he poses like a champ. Because I suppose his feet have got traction, you know? Something to hold on to. <laughs> yeah, Rambo, John Jay. Dope, eh? Very, very dope. I mean, that's a, I mean, he's, he's got a silver belt buckle on. He's got a silver blade that would glint off the sun in a heartbeat. He wouldn't have that. Believe you me, he wouldn't have that. But for the movie, it looks better when he's got a, a big stainless steel blade. I prefer Damascus myself. I used to collect knives, knives and sword canes. And I had the real thing. Wasn't uh, any mess around stuff, but when I moved to the UK... You weren't allowed to display them, so I had to sold it, sell them. So I've only got photos now of my memories and all my books on knives. I'm a bit of a book freak. I've got arcs and arcs of different comics. I've got, uh, I collect westerns. I collect Wilbur Smith because he writes about South Africa with such passion. Explains about the warrior culture in amongst the black tribes. And yeah, he's just a dope read if you want to read South Africa. There's a trilogy of books about a guy called Sean Courtney and his family and his life. Uh, he was an elephant hunter, uh, but he was British, uh, South African actually, from British stock, you know? And uh, yeah, it's called When a Lion, When a Lion Feeds, The Sound of Thunder is the second one. And when a sparrow falls, this is the third one, it was banned in South Africa for years because it's all about uh, the strikes and the riots up in Johannesburg in Fordstown when uh, Smuts called out the army to uh, attack the strikers. So very controversial. But uh, when you read it, the, the three of them, you'll, fight, you'll fall in love with the Zulus, uh, yeah, mainly the Zulus, because they were the boys. They were the boys, the Zulus and the Matabili. They were the warrior tribes. The Shona and the Mashoni, they were all uh, bottom dwellers. <laughs> when you, if you speak to a Zulu or a, a Matabili, they used to call them dirt eaters because they farmed. Yeah, oh, Chaka. And Makilikazi. But back to the man in hand. Look at that pose, man. 3-0 have really done an outstanding job with this piece. I know I keep on saying it, but I'm just... When you see him, especially in this diorama, he's just magnificent, man. He's just really, really dope. Okay, so we've got one more pose left. That's the bow pose. 
So I'll try and get a dope one for you. Yes, yes, I feel like a professional cameraman, I do. So me and Rambo will be back shooting a bow at you. And yeah, I bet you he's heard this before. I'll be back. Right, that's me back. I've tried to get him in a lack of pose. Uh, he's just not playing ball today, but I've got him in a bit of an arrow shooting pose there. So he's just cocking it. He's heard a noise and he's waiting to let loose. There you can see how the muscle bunches up around the elbow. He's got a trigger hand for the bow and he's got this uh what would you call it draw hand because it draws the strings back i haven't loaded the bow with other arrows uh simply so you could see the bow in action so to speak don't worry i'm not going to let off a shot at you but look at that man look at that rambo in all his glory eh now, the actual arrow on these recurve bows is supposed to go on top of that piece, not underneath it. But, uh, yeah, you wouldn't have known if I hadn't have told you. So, uh, yeah, look at that. How dope does that look? Again, I had to take his watch off because the peg is not long enough to keep hand and watch in the same position. He's again in the gunfighter's stance, knife back in sheath, slightly bent at the knees, feet wide apart, back slightly, is it haunched? No, that's the wrong word. On this case, his back would be ramrod straight because uh, he's got to unloose an arrow. Uh, but as he went into the firing pose to fire, once he'd found his target, he would have hunched over a bit. What do you think? He looks like, eh? He looks really dope on this diorama. Could the arrow pose be better? Yeah, I think so. But uh, it's a mission, eh? It's a mission to get it like this. So, yeah, I mean, it does its job, doesn't it? Can you see me? Can you see me? Or is it, uh, that's Roger Daltrey, isn't it? I can't remember now. But look at that. Eh? Doesn't he look dope? You must admit. He's a super poseable figure, eh? Really, really lacquer. As I say, I fall in love with him every time I, I, I put a different pose. Especially on this diorama. I see custom, Steve Weber, you're a genius, a genius. So yeah, let's go around the front again. Ah, sure, that was a bit harsh on the back. And there he is, in the bow shooting pose. He's got a hunting arrow on there. No explosive head, no nothing, just a shh pure kill shot eh? I think they're called apex heads when it's like that double edged at uh, double edged both sides very very nice Rambo you look serious in this pose oh sorry that's a sigh if you can advert you just wouldn't get it the serious Very nice, from the weathering to everything. I mean, yeah, the boots could be better, this could be better, but it's not. You get what you pay for, and Free Zero have done a sterling job on this piece. Really have a, a sterling bloody job. Now, the wonder people are so in love with this piece. Because he does what you ask of it, you know? 
You want it in a bow pose? You can get it in a bow pose. Kneeling, standing. This morning he went jogging with me. Uh, yeah, you can do anything you want. So I'd say this is the epitome of the one six scale action figure. Because the other ones, unless it's an Iron Man, you're too scared to bloody pose in case something breaks. Or tears a suit or, you know. There's the evil eye, eh? The evil eye. Okay. So I'm going to put all these poses together for you on a short video. And, uh, yeah, you'll be able to check it soon. And, uh, yeah, once I've added everything, you'll see what people are loving about this figure and why they love it so much. So let's go around the corner. See if we can catch his eye, can we? There we go, almost. Maybe one through here. No, it's through there, eh? Definitely through there. He looks mean as... I nearly said fuck. He looks mean as hell, eh? Okay. So with that said, the Don says... Peace out. Right, boys and girlses, that's me back. Posed him up on the IC Customs diorama. And we'll go in for a closer look. He's a very easy figure to pose, eh? He's actually a pleasure to pose. He's in his uh, black weathered bush jacket. He's uh, cargo pants with his fly down a bit, but I think that's because of the way I've got the legs. Again, on the IC Customs diorama, it looks purpose built for this figure, doesn't it? But it's not, it's actually off platoon. But uh, works really, really dope with this one. As you can see, he's just about to start off on his mission. He hasn't even loaded the bow rack with uh, arrows yet. He's just stepping over the log. He's got his trusty AK with the grenade launcher. His patrol bag with the high explosives in. His trusty Rambo knife, which you can't see, on his belt. A throwing blade in his boot. And he is ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. That was Anton Deck's song. Do you remember that? Okay. So his jade necklace on still. He has got his watch on. But I don't think you can see it. I'm using the draw hand to pull back the string and hold the arrow as the hand to hold the bow because he's only got another trigger hand that I could use and it didn't look that great holding the bow to be honest so I thought I'd use that one so from every angle you can see this uh, is just a dope dope figure I mentioned the book in some of the early segments, First Blood by David Morrell was one of my favorite books growing up as a kid. Uh, yeah, the ending is totally different to what the movie does. But uh, yeah, I won't spoil it for you. Read the book. The book is really good. It's called First Blood by David Morrell. You can't go wrong with it. It's a dope, dope book. So as I was saying, he built this diorama for his platoon figures, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he never used it. It was one of his earlier attempts, yeah, earlier attempt eh, at building dioramas. And look at how beautiful it is, man. So you can just imagine how good his other stuff is. But yeah, we're here to talk about Rambo as well. And there he is with his penetrating stare. Don't give him shit, otherwise he'll bug you sideways with a broken mop. Yeah, it looks like he's just eaten a pair of monkey's testicles. That's what you eat when you're in the bush. Yeah, he's got the trigger hand holding the weapon. 
He comes with an assortment of hands, but I use these two. He's got uh, a blade tied down to, no, I tell a lie. You can just see the sheath there of his blade. There's the throwing knife in his boot. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. So yeah, he's just arrived and John Jay, or Rambo as he's like to be known, is about to start his mission. So someone in the background will be shouting, right, roll camera, scene two, jungle step over. I learned that in Golden Globe Awards. Golden Globe School. All us Golden Globe directors go there. Yeah, they are over who can speak shit, it's me, eh? Some of you use music to back up the figure. I use my drivel. That's real sand, by the way. Real sand. Real driftwood. The only thing that's not real are the foliage, is the plants. Rambo's real. He's standing right here in front of you. Saigon behind him. Doing a movie shot for Rambo 3 in Afghanistan, if I remember correctly. Not in Vietnam, but uh, he's in Vietnam here. He could have worn the same outfit in Vietnam. You never know. You never know. But Joe, he's a dope, dope figure, eh? So if you look at the other segments, I've got him in a knife fighting pose. And I warn you about trapping the material that they use around the torso in between the shoulder ball joint and the actual chest and the hole where the shoulder joint goes in. It traps the actual, uh, I don't know what they're called, pecs, is it? I don't know, your, your chest muscle. It traps that behind the shoulder joint. So you must be really careful of that when posing him because if you leave it like that for an extended period of time, it's going to damage the figure and you don't want that. So please keep an eye out for that. I've heard no one come back yet with uh, complaints that the vest or the jacket has stained the body. But I th to be fair, most people are posing him with uh, bare chest, bare, bare upper torso, because you can see all the scars and this, that and the other. But he does look dope in this. But I think what I would have to do is what I did for Purple Coat Joker. I would buy an extra body just to be able to pose him with the clothes on. And then you're not worried about it getting stained if ever you have to move the figure on. Which in my game, because I'm disabled, I have to move on quite often. It's blood in, blood out, you know. Hopefully... I can uh, hold on to my grails, but uh, some of them I've had to sell in the past. Quite a few of them, actually. But it's the hobby. It's the hobby. At least you get the enjoyment of the figure. Well, for me, anyway. For the time you've got him. And I'm so chuffed that we fixed this lighting problem, eh? Look at that now. Now you can see it in 4K. That's really good, eh? I'm over the moon with that. I can go in, there's no tapping. I had it on the wrong aperture, believe it or not. I was faffing around with the camera the other day and I must have changed it. And that's why it's been losing focus all the time because it had too small an area to control. Something to that effect. But now it's fixed. John J. Rambo, Rambo 3. That's part of... Uh, I told you before, eh? Stoney's Customs, Seth Stoneberger, also good. I know quite a few uh, customizers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a segment on them and show you, just by photos though, some of their work. Uh, Brett from Bat Fanatic, yeah, he does some amazing paint apps eh, on head sculpts and that. You must see his battle damaged uh, Roman general. And he also does those, uh, you know, the movie Small Soldiers? He does those figures. He does Chip, the guy in charge. And he does the, I can't remember, it's 
not Mowgli, something like that. Mowgli's from uh, Jungle Book, but yeah, something. He's the Archer. He does those two figures, and they're really, really dope. So if you like the movie and you collect figures, uh, it's going to be a segment to watch. So I'll add in IC Customs work. Uh, yeah, th th there's a few customizers out there. Uh, Darren Biggie Row, he's good. Paint apps, fantastic. So yeah, we'll do a whole segment on there on on some of the customizers and how you can uh, get in touch. I'm still sorting out if I'm allowed to advertise on YouTube. Well, not advertise, but tell you all how to get into the groups. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still, it's a gray area at the moment because a lot of the members uh, love their privacy, you know? They like to buy what they want to buy and show what they want to show without uh, being nagged on the side. <laughs> So yeah, they're all uh, private, the groups, but dope places to be for, just for information, buy, selling, trading, group buys. You get a lot of the sellers coming on and offering us all group buys. It's really a good place to be if you're a collector. And there's ones for statues, there's one for one six figures, there's one for quarter scale, oh man, everything covered everything so yeah without further ado i'll leave you here with this fantastic rendition i just sat on something that's why my voice went up rendition of three zero rambo three one six action scale figure one six action scale figure one six action figure uh oh just another quick point before we go this bow is not the bow that comes with the figure i used a third party bow that i had for my custom rambo the same with all the arrows the arrows are from the third party piece and from this piece just to fill the quiver uh so just in case it breaks or the the thread snaps while posing or you know so yeah, it's often a good idea sometimes to get, especially if it's a dope figure and you are worrying about things breaking, then you should look at the thought third party stuff to see if you can use it on your piece. So it saves you crying your eyes out when you break something, which will cost you an arm and a leg to replace if you're gonna sell the figure on. Okay, that's Rambo, eh? It's a long road to where I've been. Yeah. A teasel found out the hard way in first blood, didn't he? Should have teasel. Yeah, oh, dope, dope figure, eh? Sorry, I'm just so excited that I've got the bloody lighting fixed that I'm taking this video into like hour long. But yeah, listen, stay safe, be good. Or be good at being bad. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Please hit subscribe. Please hit like. Leave a comment or two. But for now, me and John J. And the Don says, peace out.